Hey guys, so I know I've been gone for about 500 years and I haven't put out a video in a while, but I kind of have a good excuse. I was busy graduating high school and now I'm a college kid, so. Anyways, I am back and I'm going to be making another video for you guys, a little informational thing. Um, I didn't know how relevant this was to, you know, the vast majority of the horse world, but I got some support for it, so I'm going to be giving you my list of important stuff for you to take with you when you go camping with your horse. Obviously, there are some give me's, you know, you want to bring chairs, you want to bring water, lots of water. Um, but I'm going to go through the stuff that you may not think about that's actually really, really important. Um, so the first thing on my list is the wonderful thing that is a mat. You might not think about it, you might not think it's important, but this mat is literally like number one on my camping must-have list. Um, it goes, it's about, it's the length of my trailer, about six feet wide. It's wonderful. It doesn't matter if you're camping on gravel, if you're camping on, on grass, doesn't matter. The grass, it keeps the ticks from crawling over your legs. I can't even tell you how many ticks I did not have on my body because of this mat. Um, and when you camp at state parks, a lot of their camping spaces are gravel, and you don't want to, you know, wake up in the morning, walk out of your tent, your trailer, whatever, and just walk on gravel. No fun. Um, so this mat is wonderful. It kind of fell, but it's this thingy right here. It has horseshoes on it, it's got a horse on it, it's pretty awesome. Um, that is probably, if you're going to go camping even once, some kind of mat like that is totally worth it. I think it's like 15 bucks. No brainer. It's awesome. The second thing on my list is a sleeping bag and a pillow. That should be a give me, but I cannot tell you how many times I myself have forgotten to bring a pillow. Um, I've used balled up clothes that, I, you know, as a pillow and it sucks. Remember a pillow. Important. If you're camping in the winter, hot hands. Oh my god, these things are the best thing ever invented. They're these little packets, and what you do is that you just take them out of their little container, and you mush them around, and then the air activates them, they warm right up. I keep them in my pockets, I keep them in my sleeping bag at night if it's cold. Just put them down by your feet, put one in your chest, and you'll be warm all night. They're, I don't know how much they cost, but they're not expensive. You can get them anywhere. They're awesome. I love my hot hands. Just look them up. You'll find them. I love them so much. Going along with the cold weather theme, even if you're camping in the summer, middle of August, bring a hoodie with you. You have no idea how cold it's going to be at night. I've been in so many situations where I was stupid. I made a rookie mistake and did not bring a hoodie, and I froze my ass off. Bring a hoodie with you. Next thing on my list is a propane stove. They're not cheap, but they're worth it. Um, I think we got ours from Dick's Sporting Goods. You can really get them a whole bunch of different places. Um, there, you want the propane because you can just carry little propane thingies with you, and you know you have, you know, you can make eggs and bacon in the morning if you have pans, which we have cheap pans we bring with us. Um, and it's also very important because what you want to have with you when camping is a percolator. Why? Because it makes coffee. And it's awesome, and you can only use it if you have a stove. You're not going to be anywhere near a Starbucks, honey. It's going to be at least an hour in any direction. You're going to want coffee. It's not going to be Starbucks quality coffee, but it's going to be coffee. And this thing is freaking awesome. 20 minutes, you've got yourself a whole pot of coffee. Percolator. Get one. Um, so if you're like me, you like an embarrassing amount of sugar in your coffee. And in that case, you would bring a little screw-on container. Um, we use, you can use, um, we have little gelatin containers with a screw on top. You can use peanut butter jars, anything like that. Just clean them out, throw some sugar in there. The screw on top helps keep ants and other bugs out of it because the ants will have a freaking party in your sugar, and that's not a good thing. So that's another way you can recycle. Take your containers, screw on lid, put some sugar in it, creamer in it, you're good. Leading into my next subject, which is water for your horses, you want one of these. You know what this is? It's actually not what I'm, it's supposed to be. It's actually a grooming tote, but it works as a collapsible bucket. You can actually get collapsible buckets. I have no idea where mine is, so I'm using this. Um, it's really, 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 really important when you're out riding. You know, people might say, oh, well, there's plenty of water stops on the trail for the horse, but unless you've been there before, you cannot trust that. Okay, so you just take this, you roll it up strap it to the saddlebag, and you have a collapsible bucket. You can find a spigot somewhere. You can walk upstream, put some water in it, open it up, your horse will drink out of it, and you're good for the next couple miles. Saved my ass plenty of times. Okay, so water for your horse. Bring more than you think you'll need. What's really good, um, even if they say, you know, oh, there's horse water on site, 
the spigot could be a mile away. <laughs> um, if you're camping in the middle of a field, which I have been, sometimes you don't have a porta potty. I mean, you're, you're primitive camping. You can't trust that you'll have horse water there. So what you really want to do if you're going to be camping in that situation a lot is get a um, water tank installed in your horse trailer. I think ours is 18 gallons. Um, and that'll last us for two horses. That lasts us a good two days. After that, we carry... Um, 10 gallon buckets filled with water for the horses and that'll get us through the third day we really have never had a situation where we've run out of water because we come prepared even if there's they say we have a spigot we take water with us just in case so while we're on the topic of water human water bring plenty of it at least two cases of water for a whole weekend stay hydrated it is so important and you don't just need to bring drinking water you're going to need water for that coffee you're going to need water to wash your hands with and that's why we have this why am I bringing laundry detergent with me? I'm not. You know what's in this thing? Water. Recycling. And it's awesome. It's got its own little spigot. You can wash your hands with it. You can fill up water bottles with it. You can do whatever you want with this thing. And it is like the best idea I've ever had. This actually wasn't my idea. My mom found it on Pinterest. But I'm claiming it. This thing rocks. Of course, you're going to need something to put your horse's water in. Which is why we have little baby muck tubs. So they're totally empty, they're not used for poop or anything, we use them strictly for water, and they're awesome for putting in the paddock to fill up for water. They're stable, the horses really don't dump them over, they're awesome. Sunscreen, bug spray, bring them. A lot of them. I'm telling you sunscreen, I've gotten so burnt on these camping trips, I'm actually peeling from a sunburn right now. Take it with you, it's important. Bug spray. Alright, so, this is obviously human bug spray. I also use this on the horses combined with their horse bug spray. And I know a lot of people are going to go, oh, is that? Not their whole body. What I do is I will actually spray around their pasterns, and it keeps ticks from crawling up their legs. And it's really, really useful. It doesn't bother them at all. It doesn't last very long, so they don't have time to lick it off because you put it on right before you ride. On the topic of ticks on horses, I am the queen at preventing that. I hate ticks so much. Um, when I had fake nails, I couldn't pull them off, and I, I had like invested in a good pair of tweezers to get them off. So what I do before every single camping trip is bathe in dog flea and tick shampoo. The horse's legs and stomach. You don't have to do their whole body, um, but after bathing their legs and their tick, their legs and their stomach in this tick shampoo, you just let it lather up, leave it on there for about five minutes, rinse it off. I've been in places where other people are pulling 30, 40 ticks off of their horses. We pulled off two. It's, it's awesome stuff. Lasts for about a week. Not expensive. It doesn't matter what brand you get. Just dog flea and tick shampoo. Works really awesome. Paracord. This stuff is super important. We get in a bright orange because we actually use this to stake off our corner posts on our portable corral. And you can see it so you don't trip over it. But this stuff is great. Not only can you tie stuff off with it, you can turn this into a halter if you need to. You can turn this into anything if you need to. So this paracord... Caution, not a toy, because it's awesome. <laughs> bring appropriate footwear for you and your horse, your horse specifically. If your horse is barefoot, make sure you bring boots, even if, you know, you talk to somebody and they tell you you won't need them there. If you've never been there, it's better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them. And even if you have a horse with shoes on, invest in a pair of boots. Take them with you, because if your horse pulls a shoe while he's there, more than likely you can slap a boot on him and he'll be good for the rest of the weekend. Okay, so backtracking a little bit. We're going back to water. You're going to want to keep your stuff cold in your cooler. I know everyone out there drinks orange juice or some kind of carton like that. Save the carton. Fill it up with salt water. Freeze it. Freeze it ahead of time. Stick it in your cooler along with your first batch of ice and all your drinks. It will keep your cooler colder longer. Say that three times fast. But really, it's awesome. It actually like freeze the ice together so the ice doesn't melt. It's really, really cool. <laughs> you see what I did? Make sure you bring hay for your horse. Even if you're going to be keeping them in a paddock and you're going to be in a field that has grass, bring hay for your horse. They will eat that paddock down. They will have nothing by the second day. Trust me, I've been there. Always bring more hay than you think you will need. A bathroom. Obviously, we all don't have living quarter horse trailers. We don't all have a bathroom. I actually only have a two-horse bumper pool with a dressing room. Um... I still have a bathroom. We have a potty tent that pops up, and we have a potty that we put in it. It's a marine potty. actually flushes and everything. It's really, really cool. Um, I understand that not everybody can get a marine potty, but there's this wonderful thing called the Luggable Lou. 
And what it is, it's a plastic toilet seat. And it goes right onto a 10-gallon bucket. And what you do is you get your plastic toilet seat, you snap it on there, you get a trash bag, fill it with kitty litter, put it in there, and you have a toilet. And you don't have to go use the nasty porta potty Just stick that in the back of your horse trailer, and you're good to go. You have your own personal bathroom. A battery-operated fan and batteries. Oh my god, you will need so many batteries while you're camping, because half the time you don't have electricity. D batteries especially. And bring at least one battery-operated fan. Keep yourself cool. Glow sticks. Let's say you're camping in a tent and your toilet is in your horse trailer. You're not going to be able to see when you get up at 2 a.m. Take glow sticks, tie them to the edge of the trailer, tie them in a pathway so you know which way to walk at night. They're also really good for tying at the edges of your portable corral, or if you're high lining, tie them at the edges of the high line so people don't walk into them. Glow sticks are, they're what, a buck at the grocery store, and they will save you a lot of tripping. Bring a tarp, or multiple tarps, because if it rains, you got stuff you don't want to get wet. Alright, most importantly, bring a first aid kit. Have one in the trailer, have one in your saddlebag. Also bring a saddlebag, that's important. It's first aid kit. We really need stuff that can you can cauterize a wound with. Why did I say cauterize? That's not the word I meant. What you want to be able to do is stop bleeding, okay? You don't even need gauze. You know what you can use? A sanitary pad, a tampon. But you know what those are made to do? They're made to absorb blood. That's their job. So you just strap one onto the wound, you or your horse, and you're good until you get back to the trailer and you have a full first aid kit. This is my handy dandy first aid box and I got a whole bunch of stuff in here. I've got butte, I've got sponges, I've got vet wrap, scissors, whatever this thing is. You know, I'm good. I even got a stethoscope in here. I don't even know how to use one of those, but I got one. Alright guys, that's it for now. Um, uh, there's a million other things I could say to bring with you, but I'm sure I'm talking your ear off right now. This is going to be such a long video, I'm so sorry. You can message my Tumblr with any questions you have, anything else that you would like to see from me. I'm kind of running out of video ideas, and I want to talk about what you guys want me to talk about. So please do not be scared to send me an ask. Comment down below on this video. Anything you want to do. I love talking to you. I love you. Stay beautiful. Have a good day.